Good morning. And uh, I want to welcome you. Um, this is our um, fourth year of Advent service. Um, a couple of announcements. First of all, um, we will have a four o'clock Christmas Eve service this afternoon. Um, for those of you who can get back or those of you who are going to, who are uh, making choices about how you're scheduling your day, uh, I hope some of you will uh, join us who are not here now. And I hope some of you who are um, here now will come back again. One announcement, um, beginning next Sunday, will be a 13-week series on the life of Jesus. Between Christmas and Easter, we are going to explore from the perspective of what Jesus did, what he taught, um, what he said about himself. Who was this man? And what was his intention in the, the life that he lived? You know, all too often it looks like, well, if he was born on Christmas Eve and rose on Easter Sunday, that's all that we need. But I figure if he stayed here for three years, there must have been something he was trying to say and do. And we're going to explore that together. Um, we're going to explore that in part by embedding ourselves like reporters in first century Judaism. Because we're going to spend some time working with the context of what was going on and what things meant in Jesus' day. Ever been to a ball game? Um, and somewhere about the fourth quarter, one, one of the, the bleachers starts to go, na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. Well, you know, if you were from Mars, you'd be wondering what these people are doing. No one's leaving the stadium. Why are they saying goodbye? Jesus on the way to Jerusalem cast a fig tree. It didn't have any figs on it. He cast the fig tree. And when they the fig tree again, the fig tree was, what, what about? What, what, was Jesus throwing a temper tantrum? You didn't give me. I'm going to kill the tree. No, well, we happen to know that the fig tree was a symbol for the Jewish nation. That's a, an object lesson coming from Jesus. So, anyway, we're going to spend that time. At the life of Jesus. And we're going to spend our time in Sunday school studying for the week ahead. So if you haven't been joining us in Sunday school, um, we would love to see you there. We, we meet at quarter of 10. Uh, we go for an hour and we take a look at what's going to be the sermon for the next week. So we will be. Blah, 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 blah. We will be beginning our, our study next Sunday, and we will be beginning our sermons uh, next Sunday with the born in a perfect storm. That being said, I welcome you to this morning's service. This morning's service is hopefully a word of good news, of gospel, 
for those people for whom this season is not a time of joy. Many churches have begun taking a look at what we call uh, Blue Christmas. Service is created around the idea of what is the good news for those of us for whom this is not a good season for whatever reason. And so I hope whether you are watching this from YouTube or Facebook, or if you are here this morning and carrying some of that with you, that you will find something in today's sermon and service that will speak to your heart. I'm going to ask now that Shirley will come and lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning, church family and friends. We'd like to welcome each and every one of us here today. And we have so much to be thankful for that we are able to be here. And we will keep the ones in mind that's not here, disabled or whatever it may be. We just put it in the hands of the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you. And we say thank you for each and every moment that you give us. We are so blessed, Lord. We are super duper blessed. And if people don't feel they need to thank you, I think I thank him enough for each and every one because every second means a lot to me. Lord God, we just want to thank you from where you brought us from. We thank you for where you intend to take us. Lord God, as long as our mind, body, and soul is involved with you, because you are our all in all in everything we do. We want to thank you so very much and thank that we live to see another Christmas Eve. Christmas Day is not here yet, but we hope and pray that we will live past that. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for our dear pastor. And we ask you to be with him and be with each and every one of us as he bring us your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 102. It's adapted. Um, and it is a reminder to us that in the scripture that we use and the prayer book that the Psalms are for us are words that are created to help us through the times of difficulty and pain. So please join with me in our call to worship as we stand. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not die high when I am in stress, to repeat with me, when I let my call in between. For my days vanish like smoke, my bones burn like glowing embers, my heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. In my stress, I grow loud, and in that too skin and all I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I am like a ring. I am like a calm like I eat ashes of my food and mingle my drink with tears because you have taken me up and thrown me aside. I raise like eating I wither away like Speak some word of comfort to me, one that I can hear through the noise of shoppers and the elevator music. I need you now, Lord. Come to the empty state of my heart. I'm going to ask that Ray come and light our four Advent candles.
love you back. On your feet, on your feet, on A sacred witness bear in this black out Oh, this fourth Sunday of Advent, we come together to raise up our concerns. Um, we want to pray for Douglas, yeah. for Doug Dudrow. Um, Doug had two surgeries this week. Um, one to drain the blood that surrounds his brain, um, and the other to remove the drainage tubes. 
and uh, I was able to visit with him before the first surgery to talk to him after the first surgery on the phone, uh, but I have not talked to him uh, since uh, Friday when they did the, the second surgery. Now, if anybody has any additional information, yes. Good. You know, happy. Good. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. So, so his wife, uh, yes. Yeah. So, um, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So he's doing much better. Um, but he's worried about Ruby. Ruby. Okay, he's worried about Ruby because you know he's been looking after Ruby, and um, so uh, he has asked that folks can go by, um, have a chance to go by and see Ruby, please. Uh, are there others? Yes. She says, tell everyone Merry Christmas. And um, I told her that we would pray for her and her husband. Um, prayers for Ruby, because she's so separated from us right now. Um, and pray for those that are come with during yes. this time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Others? Please pray with him. For God, we are grateful for Doug's progress. We are also grateful to see Dennis here with us and for his progress. We pray for Yvonne and her husband. I must pronounce that. Yvonne and. Oh, what? Oh. Okay. Uh, Lord, you know names better than I do. And when I stumble and we stumble even in prayer, you hear. We pray for the homeless. We pray especially this morning for those for whom this is not a season of joy, for whatever reasons. There are reasons, oh God, that hearts hold sadness that we do not know about. But we lift those hearts to you as well. And we make all of these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, listen to me, dear. Send us this love, send us this love, send us this prayer. Guys, we're going to come over here so that we don't accidentally knock over a poinsettia, and we're going to sit on the steps together. Oh. I uh, went looking today for a young cat. 
and he was hiding. I found him in my uh, puppet box, hiding under uh, Louis the Lizard. And I, I, he was not happy when I pulled him out. And I said to him, so, so, Grumpy, what's the matter with you? This is Christmas, for goodness sake. He said, yeah, so, ah. Uh, and I said, Grumpy, how come you seem especially grumpy right now? On this beautiful holiday, you're acting like a stick in the mud. Shall we call you Scrooge? He said, well, I'll tell you why. He said, I was one of a litter of six. There were six of us. And we used to have some of the most wonderful Christmases that first couple of years. And then all my brothers and sisters got taken away to other homes. People came who loved them and they carried them away. And were very sweet and wonderful to them. And I, of course, came with you. It hadn't been that bad. But I haven't seen my brothers and sisters in here. And especially on Christmas, I miss them. And I thought to myself, that's a perfectly good reason to be grumpy. And I understand a little more. Now, sometimes you and I see people who are a little... And we don't know what's going on in their heart. We just think they're grumpy cats. And even grumpy cat has a little bit of sadness that he's carrying. And so maybe what we do is try to understand what that sadness might be and help them not cheer up, that doesn't really work real well. I mean, have you ever had somebody when you were sick? Come go. Come on now. Jump out of bed. Come play soccer with me. And you want to go. So, so maybe, maybe we do what the two little boys that I heard of one time, they were sitting on the curb crying. The man walked by and he said, what's the matter? He said, one of them said, we have an ache in Tommy's stomach. And what they did was they were such good friends that they helped carry some of that sadness together. And so maybe that's this morning what we do for one another. And maybe by the end of the service, grumpy won't be so grumpy anymore. He said, don't bet on it, but let's pray. Dear God, give us eyes to see the sadness in the hearts of those we love around us and to sit with them in their sadness rather than to try to cheer them up and make them not make us so uncomfortable. Amen. Thank you. Please stand up and greet people around you. Wave to the camera. Let the people on Facebook know we miss them, but we're glad they're here too. So I say to you this morning, in the name of our Lord 
Jesus Christ, the peace of God be with you. I'm going to ask Joyce to come now and, and pray over our all. Father God, thank you for bringing your church together today to worship you and to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you bestow upon us every single day. Thank you, Lord, that we are giving back some that you've given to us to be used for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Break is God from whom no blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Holy Ghost. Upon the midnight clear, the glorious song of old, with angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to men from heaven's all oh, gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hasting on by prophets sing of old. When with the ever circling ears shall come the time foretold. When peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors flee, and all the world give back the song which now the angels sing. As said, we sort of titled this this sermon, Blue Christmas. And of course, we all know where that phrase comes from. It comes from Elvis singing, I'll have a blue Christmas without you. Yeah, so um, my Elvis impersonation is not what it used to be. So we're going to move to our scripture. And... Look first at Psalm 37, 1 through 4. This is a psalm written by the exiles in Babylon. Uh, Babylon, by the way, had uh, a water system that was magnificent and carried water and waste and all this stuff. And so this, this psalm, this poem, was written the exile. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. 
there on the poplars, we hung up our harp. For there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy that said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord in a foreign land? And from Mark 10, 46 through 52. They came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and called him. And they said to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. And throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. I don't know if you know how cold Pensacola can get. We think Pensacola, Florida, it must be warm and no, 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 no. Christmas Day in Pensacola, 1972. I'm walking guard duty. I don't have any leave. And I've been assigned to walk guard duty on Christmas Day in my Navy peacoat trying to keep warm from the wind blowing off the water. There is nothing like wind blowing off the water. The only thing I've seen that was clear was Cape Todd in January with a nor'easter coming in. I was cold. I was lonely. I had absolutely no Christmas spirit whatsoever. It's the first moment that I could identify with what we mean by a blue Christmas. And that frankly was minor because I could look at that and I could go, I'm going to one day not be walking guard duty on Christmas. To, to many of us, some of you, some of the folks on Facebook or YouTube with us know a much deeper loneliness. This may be for you the first Christmas without a loved one. Those of us who have lost parents know how agonizing that can be. This, this may be for some hearing my voice the first Christmas without a spouse who has left or died, without children who normally might be with you, but this is their Christmas with the other spouse, and you're there with a tree. Many of us come to this day with pain 
And some of us look at our pain and we go, did, did I do something to help cause this? We, we have a sort of a joke in our family right now that sons always go spend Christmas with their wives' family. And since I know he does not listen, I'm going to use my son as a sermon. Uh, 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 a sermon story. And if you know my son, you can tell him that I did this. I will be revenged. So I know that, that, that my daughter-in-law has a big family. And they gather together every Christmas. They all live in Severna Park, not too far down the road from his father. And so every year, we get a little text that goes, I will be available from two to four. Oh, you, you, you get what I'm going at. And part of me always goes, I understand. And part of me always goes, what did I do to deserve this? My son. Anyway, and I can put on Baldwin Man and I can run the guilt trip. It doesn't do much good. But I also know that there are many families that are torn apart long before this holiday gets arrived, gets to arrive, who struggle with that torn apartness during this holiday in a de much deeper way. They feel like exiles. I have a friend who is transgendered. And my friend has been rejected by his family. And in the last couple of weeks, he and I have seen each other. I'm sorry. He and I have seen each other. And this is not a good time for her. This is not a time when she goes, it is Christmas, I will be with the ones I love. Can you just for a moment, hear in those words, I'm gonna ask you to flip them back to the Psalm, please. And listen to these words again. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Can, can you put the persons you know or remember or yourself in that moment? By the Christmas tree on my little table in my apartment, I sat and cried as I remembered what I used to have. And there on the poplars, we hung up our harps. I own the radio because I can't stand to hear the Christmas music that seems to be asking me to make merry and bright in this place of exile where I am. Because the whole world seems to be saying to us, sing to us one of those bright, beautiful Christmas songs. I'll be home for Christmas. You can plan on me. How can we sing songs of joy? in this kind of exile. How can I sing the songs of the Lord when I feel in that kind of exile?
I, I wish I could give you an answer to all of you watching on Facebook and going, yeah, I know that one. That For some of you, let me be honest, for some of you, that feeling of exile is one of the reasons you're watching on Facebook rather than from a pew. Because it feels like when you come to church, everybody wants you to praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. When part of you feels alienated and alone. I wish I had for you a, 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 a magic wand. Part of what I have for you, though, is the story of Bartimaeus. And you may be asking me, well, what's the story of Bartimaeus got to do with my feeling so alone? So let's, let's do a little bit of um, the kind of thing we're going to be doing for the next few weeks about context. Okay? Bartimaeus was a blind beggar. And he made his living, what there was of it, on the road to Jericho. He sat on the side of the road. He put his cloak in front of him and up on his lap. And what happened was people would come by and they would throw coins onto his robe. Now, remember, Bartimaeus is blind. He knows what it's like to have the kids run back and hit him in the back of the head and run away. He knows what it's like to have somebody run by and scoop up his coins. But what he does is at the end of every day, he takes that cloak and he ties the four corners of it so that when whoever is coming to guide him home comes, he will be able to carry whatever he has made that day. And he's sitting there, and he hears Jesus coming by, and he realizes that's who it is, and he says, have mercy. Now, we don't know really, at that point, whether he meant, Jesus, I know you got to have some money that's helping your folks along. Can I have a bit of it? Or whether he was asking at that point to be healed. But there's a little story within the story here. Bartimaeus, bar, Timaeus, means son of Timaeus. Timaeus was a Greek philosopher. So somebody took this and played with this story to try to send out a lesson. Bartima uh, Timaeus was one of those Greek, Greek philosophers who believed that everything was structured and organized and there were the powerful and the rich up here and the merchant class in here who knew what side their bread was buttered on, and the rest of us down here struggling to get by, and nothing ever changed. What is it like to be Bartimaeus, to believe that nothing ever changes? You're blind, you're a beggar, that's your lot, shut up. You're lonely, you're in pain, you're grieving, that's your lot. Hush and don't interrupt those people singing joy to the world. Ever felt that way? I know I have. Felt stuck in that place, not of sharp agony, but that dull thud 
of pain. That's where Bartimaeus was. That's where many of us are. And everybody kept telling him, you know, shut up. Quit screaming like that. You're a pain. And Jesus stopped and he said, come on over here. And so they said to him, so get up. Oh, he's calling for you. Now, I got to tell you, that's kind of rude. Okay, think about it for just a minute. You're blind. You can't see. Jesus is calling. You got, I mean, you kind of know where he is. And people go, so get up, Bartimaeus. Go see him. Think about it. People keep going to you. If you and Jesus would only talk about it, you'd feel better this Christmas season. Excuse me? Right this minute, I couldn't find Jesus to pray to with both hands and a joystick. But Bartimaeus does something remarkable. He throws off that cloak. We read that and we go, okay, so he was sitting there and he was staying warm. And no, he was was all his money. It went everywhere. When he threw that cloak, coins went everywhere. And, and they took him to Jesus, and Jesus said, what do you want? Oh, I don't know, Jesus. Uh, I was, was hoping maybe we'd get a couple of days of sunny weather. That's a strange question. I want to see again. Notice, I want to see again. There had been a time when Bartimaeus was not blind. And he wanted to see Again, and Jesus' response to him was, your faith has made you whole. Now, I couldn't have done it. I'm sorry. I, I, I really do not know if I could have done it. I got 10,000 people standing beside me singing, Happy sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with glory divine. And I'm over here with Grumpy Cat. And Jesus says, what do you want? Well, I tell you what I don't want. I don't want that. I don't want that coat hanger Christianity. You know what I'm talking about. And we take a whole hand. <laughs> so I got a smile on my face, and along whether I want it there or not. I want to see again. There was a time when Bartimaeus could see. And he brought his blindness to Jesus. And Jesus said, your faith, your willingness to bring your blindness to me has made you whole. There's a whole story in there. How hard is it to bring our blindness, our pain, our longing to Jesus? Often we, we have an easier time with the coat hanger. Or like uh, Grumpy Cat this morning, we hide somewhere. And we bah humbug at the people who dig us out and go, hey, come, come do something fun with me. Bartimaeus took 
the agony of his blindness to Jesus and said, have mercy. Do you know how vulnerable it is? What happens if Jesus looks at him and says, Bart, old buddy, I'd like to help you. But you know what the philosopher Timaeus says. Life's just like that. He risked from the minute he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. From the minute he threw his cloak aside and the coins scattered everywhere and he he had to get help going there, but he got to Jesus and Jesus said, what do you want? And he didn't sing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. He said, I want to see again. Your faith has made you whole. Now, I'm not saying to anyone in this congregation or on Facebook, there is an instant cure for the pain you carry. that when we will risk taking that pain and laying at, at the feet of the one who loves us. That risk can make us whole. That's not a magic act. It's not a one and done. In times in my life when I have felt that, some of them have been a long time. But I do know that for all of us struggling with those pains this that there is an answer. That when we scream out have mercy Heal me of these things that keep me from seeing the world as it is. Because I tell you, when you've got that kind of pain going, the world you see is not the world that is. And in some ways, we know that. It isn't, you know, either, but it's, it, it's not the world that is. Can we risk? And then can we risk saying to Jesus, I want to see again. A world that is not rigged in such a way that we will be in pain. A world that is not rigged in such a way that, like the Greek philosophers, believe that you were stuck in a position all your life. I want to see again. And when I open my eyes, what I want to see is the world the way the kingdom is. We're God's, God's own self. They all their tears, and he will make his home with them. That's not pie in the sky. That's presence in highest field. Amen and amen. Stand with me for our last hymn. Of the hanging world angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and 
See my God and sinners reconciled. Joyful we nations rise. Joy the triumph of the skies. With that jingling the coast proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. All the herald angels sing. Glory to the Lord. By highest hand of the Lord, drag as the air of the Lord. Lord. Lead in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Faith with flaster, a kind at sea, hail the incarnate deity, beings expand with them. To dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. All of the heaven, Lord, can sing glory to the King. To all he prays, he gives his wings. Say glory to the new king. As you go out from this place on, for many of us, this blue Christmas, go risk, lay that pain in front of the one who loves us, strengthened by the knowledge that in the goodness of God we were born. By the watchfulness of God, we are kept all the day long. And in the love and mercy of God, we are all being redeemed and made whole. Amen. Please take a moment here with me to say Merry Christmas to Mary Ann. 